Okay, another shocker du jour. Everybody knows what membranes are. They surround your organs, they surround your skin. Your, your skin is a membrane. Everything that surrounds a body part is a membrane. Even your red blood cells have membranes surrounding them. A membrane is there so you don't get invaded. So that's case number one. All right, now this is case number two. All your organs, basically, and your whole body, your skin, your fingertips, your everything, connects to your brain through what they call a vagus nerve, pretty much. Some, I think, can go direct in, you know, like your eyeballs and stuff, but a lot, a lot of it is through this trunk. Now, you see how these fibers are coming out of here, these nerve fibers? You know, they go out and they come back. You've got to send and receive. Send and receive on everything that you do. Now, this is the way the nerves work. They send and receive on that one line in and out. Now, think of this. There's the fluid-filled highway, which is your lymph system. I say it works very similar to this, where each organ has its own bag that surrounds it. And its tubes lock it in, just basically just like that. It has two tubes that come out and go into the next organ or into your body. But it's one big system, yes. But every organ is on its own. And it's in its own bag. All right, just like here. So think of these it, these exact situations being lymph ducts running right alongside the nerves. Let's just think of it that way. The nerves run out with the lymph ducts, and they all run back, and they run into a central system, basically. Would each one of these organs in its own fluid bag have a different type of chemistry and I think it would because your stomach is going to be totally different than your heart and your eyeballs and everything else you're going to have fluid filled surroundings a membrane around everything you've got a membrane around everything is the membrane fluids the same in your lungs as they are in your kidneys and your bladder and all that stuff I don't think they are and I think I have found the two little tubes that control the entry and exit of those fluids into each one of these bags. If I'm right, this is going to require some research. Okay, you can study up on our lymphatic system, but it's, it's a bunch of fluids that carry around the enzymes, the bacteria, a lot of nutrients, all kinds of stuff. It's separate from the blood system, more or less. It does end up getting into the bloodstream, and then it comes back out of the bloodstream, gets cleaned up, and gets back into the bloodstream. Now, the lymphatic system is very, very important, but my concern is, is it just one huge web and everything inside of it is sort of mixed up and connected, or is it like the nervous system where it they everything has its own thing and then it all comes together in a big trunk and I think that's what's going on I think every organ and all of the tissues where they come come together have these two little holes in them and that's what transfers the fluids in and out of that bag and each one of them is in its own bag that's what I'm thinking now and I think in that bag, it may not be the same chemistry from this bag to that bag and that bag and that bag. There could be different chemistry. We don't know these things, I don't believe. And I don't even think we know that there's these two little holes. And I'm going to show them to you. I found them in the mud fossils. They're there. There's no question about it. All right. This is amazing stuff. And it's all come from mud fossils. This is a mud fossil piece of meat. It's in extremely perfect condition. Now, right here is where all the cartilage, I mean the um, fascia comes together. You see how thin it is here? It's like a very thin sheet. 
and then it all comes together and gathers together here and then locks itself into the next organ and in this case into another piece of meat more than likely or a shoulder or something. Now there's two little dots here. I got it. This is in the microscope. It's right at the end of this flap and that flap latches over into the next body part just like this and they work together and it lets the fluids flow from this bag, literally this bag all by itself, it's in its own bag and the fluid fills out and goes back in and that's how it enters and exits the rest of the giant system which is all a network of tubes and these are the two tubes now let's look at this carefully here's where you gotta have your little mud fossil eyes on you see how that's white and you follow it back you see this here? That's the, f the f that's the feeder of the fluid. Now, this one here, you see it's a darker color? And that one there is it feeds off of here and there, it looks like, together. And I think this one might have a little bit of an organ to it. Because I have found, it, well, I'll show you in a minute just in basic chicken tissue it has the same thing two tubes come down and I'll show you that in a second but you see how it's coming down here for, and that's the fluid either coming in or going out and that's the other side and I think that might be a little bit of an organ looks like a little snake but it's I think it might be an organ So that's the latch, and it's on the lungs, it's on everything. I found it on all the body parts where they lock together. All right, so you see what I'm saying now, is those two little dots would be attached just like they are here, right, into the lungs, one going and one coming back. Same thing, one going and one coming back, one going and one coming back, into the f huge fluid-filled highway network that covers the whole body with lymph fluids. But is it possible, and I think maybe it is, that each one of these organs has its own rubber bag around it with an in and an out. Other than that, nobody gets in or out. And it's, that's exactly what I just showed you. This one here, these two little dots. Okay. The white one, and the other one that is not white. See the two of them? And, and let me show you the chicken tissue too. It's basically the same thing. All right, now I'm gonna do it with chicken tissue. This is red meat. This is like beef or something. And that's where it all comes together with the fascia into that little nut-like thing. And it has the two little dots. And this here is where it gets real thin. Well, chicken does the same thing. You see where it all comes down together, where it all starts to gather up here at the end? And you go back here and it's just, it's a real thin skin. They call it a thin skin. And when it comes right down to where it gathers, it bundles up. And then right here is this. That is this. Now let me show you what it looks like when you boil everything off and you just end up with the two tubes coming down. And it's got something else going along with it that looks like it might be an organ. I don't know. All right, look at this carefully. This is a tube coming down. Remember I told you this is at the end, right where the, where the latch comes in, which is this right here. This is the same, exact same thing as that. And there's a little knot there. They're going to break right off there just like that. As a matter of fact, I got one here. Look at this. This is a lung. A little tiny lung. I don't know what kind of creature it's from, but it's a tiny lung. And it has that latch in it, which is the lock. And it has the fluids, two little tubes coming out, same as all of them. And it makes like almost like a triangle. And this is it right here. This is the same as this. And it's the same as this. 
and it's the same as I t all of the lungs I have have the same thing and all of the ones I have that I can find that attachment have those two little spots. So here they come. Now, what does that mean? One of them, I said, is the in and one of them is the out, which is doesn't matter. It's just that that's how it happens. Now, so let's say this is the in and this is the out. Well, what is this right here? What is going on with that? This is just a clear tube goes through there. And I think it just gets underneath all this goopy stuff. It keeps going until it comes out somewhere up wherever it goes. But this one's different, I think. This one comes down with, it. it's another tube. These are tubes of fluids run through them. And here, it's got something else going on. That doesn't. That looks like it's part of the tool. That looks like. It looks like it's supposed to be there, and you can almost see. You see the dot, the dot, the, all those little dots. What's going on there? Is there something happening to the chemistry here? Is there something happening here? What it is ain't exactly clear. But I think this, it could be an organ, I have no idea. But that little goopy stuff comes around and keeps going and then turns into, I believe, that tube to go to wherever the next organ is. So that's how that comes out and that's the same as these two little dots here. And that's the same coming right off the end of the chicken which I just showed you here. And that's this stuff here, nice, very thin. You see right through it. But right when it comes to here, it all knots together, and then you end up with this little flap thing right here. Same thing. Same thing, my friends. Okay, so that is my question. Is this fluid separate from that fluid and separate from the, all the other fluids that surround all the other tissues are they in their own separate bags? That's what I want to know. If that's the case, then we could sample these fluids and find out what's going on with those fluids. That will lead us to more understanding of diseases and so forth. Once you understand what the fluids should be, then you can find out what they are and then you can possibly adjust them. This could have huge implications for, for uh, health effects. I mean, it really, really, honestly could. Because uh, already, I'm, I understand the enzymes and the bacteria and so forth, which is not well understood either. They're just starting to understand the microbiome to some degree, and I don't think very close, because the, the end result is the ribosomes, the enzymes, and the chemistry which never happens until you can go fast enough with the enzymes. The enzymes are the key to everything. And they know, or they at least claim, that there's about 75,000 known enzymes. Every one of them is so unbelievably specific, it's hard to believe, but they are so specific that you can get all the chemistry done in your body and it's done just flawlessly if you have the right bacteria. Without the right bacteria, you don't get the enzymes, you don't get the chemistry. And that's it. So if those two holes going in and out serve as strictly that bag, we might be able to get a handle on something. If it's not strictly handled in that bag, well, then that's another story. But as far as I can see, it might be. And that's what I'd like to find out from some autopsy people. All right, I love you all. Thank you, my good friends. Goodbye.